Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike here. Mike's other page. Monday night, June 26th. Doing a little 5 o'clock somewhere weather quickie here on YouTube. Man, our YouTube's rocking, so thanks for sharing, commenting, and subscri subscribing or whatever you do on YouTube. But we're getting up there. <laughs> tropics are a little quiet. We're going to talk about tropics, and then I'm going to talk about um, this big heat wave coming this week. So I got a lot, lot to show you here in this quickie little video. Um, so here's Monday night, e uh, Monday evening here. We got a little spot that the NHC is watching. This is actually old leftovers from Cindy. Uh, remember Tropical Storm Cindy popped up, curved northwest, and remnants of Cindy are spinning out here. This is what it looks like tonight. You can almost see a naked little swirl. Um, a lot of wind shear blowing that convection off to the uh, east. But if you look close, you can see a little bit of spin right here. And that is uh, low-level clouds spinning away. So it's got the structure. The convection, though, got blown away. That way it lost its uh, classification. But the NAC believes there's a chance it could come back. Rains from Bermuda Wednesday, Thursday, and then this thing might get close to Nova Scotia into the weekend. So it could reorganize. And if it reorganized, it would be uh, Cindy. It would keep the name Cindy. So pretty neat, right? Uh, down the road, real quick, there is signs we're going to see a wave uh, popping in from uh, Africa in about a week time frame maybe july 3rd somewhere around there uh july 3rd july 4th possibly been showing off and on in the models um this little area has been showing up on the models too but nothing nothing that's uh confident right now um but you know if we were to look for an area there is signs that we could see a wave nearing uh the islands this time next week so low confidence but it is juicy out there. If we go back to the page here, Mark's Word page, you can see a lot of action out here coming in off of Africa. So this is kind of the area we're going to watch and see if it makes over to the islands this time next week. Uh, some of the ensembles, you know, showing a few spaghettis. So it's worth mentioning if that was maybe the next spot to watch um, in the tropics. A couple things, too, uh, that's going to help this possibly. We have something called the MJO. I talk about this a lot. Uh, the MJO is going to be kind of in a, an enhanced stage. Uh, uh, it passes by that Caribbean area. So that's going to be one little favorable um, condition that might allow some, something to, to get going. Right now, there's a lot of dust out there. Uh, I'll show you that here in a second. One little thing on the tropics I want to note real quick. Uh, overall, this is on tropicaltidbits.com. This is your water anomaly maps. Now, that was been the discussion Things are starting to catch back up to, to being normal. Um, the white areas are typically your 30-year averages where it should be if you base things on history. But what we're seeing, which we've talked a lot about it, um, maintaining those crazy anomalies uh, seem, seem kind of hard. The seven-day change here, this is on tropicaltivist.com. You can see the seven-day change. We had a lot of trade winds blowing across the Atlantic, cooling down these waters. So the waters are kind of slowly coming back down to normal again so just wanted to throw that out there water temperatures aren't as drastic as they once were and they and they fluctuate a lot so this is something they're going to be watching but it is worth noting that the seven day average dropped kind of a, a lot we'll see if that main maintain itself so here's a big story coming up heat this is a brand new map dangerous heat in california we have dangerous heat from texas to the carolinas down into florida for the uh, leading up to july 4th weekend um, crazy triple digit heat heat indexes are through the roof um, this is partly why we have a high pressure system parked in over the Gulf of Mexico high pressure systems kind of block any sort of moisture and any fronts and stuff so this whole region right here is gonna be hot 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 for the next uh, uh, all the way to the July 4th this is an anomaly map again the gray should be normal temperatures red is everything above normal and you can just see this is all the way to the Friday Saturday, we're talking 10 degrees plus from normal for a big part of this whole southern Mississippi Valley down into Florida. Reds are way above normal uh, for this time of year. So that's all the way to July 4th. Some of your temperatures here for Texas, you can see triple digits for the whole state, triple digits for uh, Mississippi, Louisiana. This is for um, Wednesday, Thursday, hundreds all the way through Arkansas, Oklahoma. So that's incredible. We switch over to Florida. In the rest of the southeast, going into Wednesday, Thursday, we got a hundreds touching tips of Florida, into Georgia, into you know Mississippi. So it's going to be hot. Hundreds up into Tennessee. This is uh, midweek this week. We're, I've, I've seen some uh, forecasts, possibly middle part of the state of Florida could reach a hundred. Uh, this is uh, Thursday, Friday. 
Saturday. No, no, no relief. Heat, heat, heat indexes are even, even crazier. 120 plus in some spots. Um, the last thing that's going to kind of make an impact going into July 4th, this is your dust map. And as we get into um, July 1st right here, this is a big plume of dust that comes in off of Africa, the Saharan air layer. Uh, a, this is helping keep tropics kind of quiet right now. If you look at where we're at currently, let's say about right here, there's a lot of dust out here in the Atlantic. This is helping keep an organization down. There's a lot of shear, a lot of winds. So when you have a lot of dust, sometimes tropical systems have a hard time organizing. But when we get into July 4th, Second, we got some that might make its way into the southeast and actually make its way into the Gulf in Florida. This makes hazy skies, milky skies, keeps things dry. Uh, so it, it, it'll it'll have that look. Like I tell everybody, it'll be like we're on Mars. <laughs> if you if you ever wanted to visit Mars, uh, this is what the skies look like. It's going to be milky and kind of whitish because the dust blocks the sun. Uh, it makes things even hotter. So that's what we got to look forward to going into July 4th. Possible some areas in the southeast getting some of that um, dry, drier skies. But it does make for nice sunsets. The dust in the sky actually helps uh, make some vibrant sunrises and, and sunsets. So, And Louie over there is... Uh, hey, Louie! <laughs> Sound effects for you. Hey, you better? Louie! Okay, he's better now. You can see Louie tomorrow. We got him back from the vet. So we'll show you Louie in the morning um, for the Daily Brew. So don't forget, we're live on Monday through Thursday this week. Maybe not Friday if there's no weather going on. The Daily Brew runs at 919 Eastern um, right here on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. So we'll see you there. All right. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye-bye.